Over the last few weeks, we have made um, references uh, references uh, uh, to the royal family, uh, which which could be construed as being slightly less than respectful. But this was this was never intended. Never. <laughs> we understand that a certain person herself. Well, pardon me. <laughs> well, a certain being, perhaps a certain personage herself <laughs> has actually decided to watch this week's program. <laughs> um, to sort of uh, check up on the content. <laughs> so, so welcome to the program, Mom. <laughs> we are um, chuffed. We, we, are, we are we are overawed and and, and extremely honoured that you should spare the time to actually view our humble offering. I hope you are amused by what you see. I, I certainly, for one, feel extremely proud that I will be able to tell my grandchildren that a, a programme I was in was actually watched by, by Mrs Whitehouse. <laughs> At a party to celebrate her 55th birthday last week, Mrs. Thatcher blew on the cake and lit the candles. The USA, and we must apologize for an error in one of our earlier bulletins, in which we said that Ronald Reagan had been hitting the coloreds and putting the balls on the table. We were, of course, referring to Ray Reardon. <laughs> News for horse lovers, and there was excitement for Lady Diana Spencer today when her hat blew off during a ride with Prince Charles. On hearing the news, the Duke of Edinburgh said, that's my boy. Come in, shut the door. Now then, Savage, I want to talk to you about some charges that you've been bringing lately. I think that perhaps you're being a little overzealous. <laughs> Which charge did you mean, then, sir? Well, for instance, this one. Loitering with intent to use a pedestrian crossing. <laughs> Savage, maybe you're not aware of this, but it is not illegal to use a pedestrian crossing. Neither is smelling of foreign food. <laughs> An offence. You sure, sir? <laughs> also, there is no law against urinating in a public convenience <laughs> or coughing without due care and attention. If you say so, sir. Yes, I do say so, Savage. Didn't they teach you anything at training school? Oh, sorry, sir. Some of these cases are just plain stupid. Looking at me in a funny way. <laughs> Is this some kind of joke, Savage? No, sir. And we have some more here. Walking on the cracks in the pavement. <laughs> Walking in a loud shirt in a built-up area <laughs> during the hours of darkness. And walking around with an offensive wife. <laughs> in short, Savage, in the space of one month, you have brought 117 ridiculous, trumped-up and ludicrous charges. Yes, sir. Against the same man, sir. Yes, sir. A Mr. Winston Kudogo of 55 Mercer Road. Yes, sir. Sit down, Savage. Yes, sir. Savage, why do you keep arresting this man? He's a villain, sir. A villain. And, and a jailbird, sir. I know he's a jailbird, Savage. He's down in the cells now. We're holding him on a charge of possession of curly black hair and thick lips. Uh, well, 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 there you are, sir. You arrested him, Savage. Thank you, sir. Savage, would I be correct in assuming that Mr. Kadogu is a coloured gentleman? Well, I can't say I've ever noticed, sir. <laughs> Stand up, Savage. Savage, you're a bigot. It's officers like you that give the police a bad name. 
The press love to jump on incidents like this, and the reputation of a force can be permanently tarnished. Your whole time on duty is dominated by racial hatred and petty personal vendettas. Did you get some kind of perverted gratification from going around stirring up trouble? Yes, sir. <laughs> There's no room for men like you in my force, Savage. I'm transferring you to the SPG. Thank you, right, Now get out! Oh, it's my <laughs> Uh, it's your edge, sir. Yes, yes, I did it. Never mind. Get it. I didn't understand it. Some people called him mad. But any friend of Hitler's huh. gotta be all bad. <laughs> Burn it, Oswald Arnold Mosley. <laughs> Burn it, Oswald Arnold Mosley. <laughs> he was popular and handsome. As Richard Burton <laughs> Cos I seen him on the box once With his black shirt on <laughs> And oh, I cannot claim to be Any great authority As far as I'm concerned The sun shone out of his oratory <laughs> He wasn't in a great dictator Given half a chance But they treated him like a traitor So he went a little Hello and welcome to University Challenge, and this week we welcome back the team from Parker's Prison, Isle of Wight. Jack, the Raisin McLeod, Mad Axman Malloy, and Roy Acidbath Peters, all reading sociology with the Open University. And their team captain, Lenny the Trousers Stevenson, doing a postgraduate course in writing pompous letters to the Times. Good evening. And their challenger, from Wordwood Scrubs, Dr. James Stocks, Professor Reggie Stocks, Hello. Dr. Ronnie Stocks, Hello. and Booker Prize winner Wally Cook. Hello. <laughs> they were formerly the notorious Lambeth Garage Poisoners and are now all reading chemistry at the University of Warwick. <laughs> and the subject of the first round is London, your starter for ten, no conferring, who was responsible for the shooting of Alec the Horse Bomparini on or about the 6th of July, 1978? Parkhurst Stevenson. Uh, uh, Wide Boy Dixon. Wide Boy Dixon, a very plausible answer, Parkhurst. <laughs> I, can, I can let you have a full ten years remission there. Now, three <laughs> questions. Three questions, five years each, you may confer. He, he, was thought, he was thought to have been involved in the Blackheath security van heist. Uh, that's the dog. Uh, Reggie the Dog Trubshaw. Reggie the Dog. <laughs> very well grasped indeed there, Parkhurst. <laughs> and the second question... Where is he hiding now? I'll have to hurry up. Uh, we're not sure. We'll have a guess. Uh, 31 Avenue des Anglais, Nice. Yes, I, I can believe that. And <laughs> finally, were the Lambeth Poisoners, the Lambeth Poisoners, also responsible for a string of bank raids in July 1979? Uh, no. I can give you some help here. Nice hotel in Rio, change of identity protection, 60,000 a secret bank account. Yeah, yeah, they did it, yeah, yeah. I like trucking, I like trucking, I like trucking and I like to truck. I like trucking, I like trucking, if you don't like truck, duck, duck. On the road, you must be brave and tireless. On the road, you can listen to the
round about and picking up a hiker You're chatting up that piece of skirt who's sitting by your side Then pop the crucial question A ride for a ride of all that makes this life worthwhile is waving off the car behind giving him a smile with glasses and with gratitude he revs his little load and meets another trucking trucker trucking down the road Don't like that on a public highway, you deserve to be called a raving maniac. 25 right, years thanks. I was in the police force and quite honestly I've never seen That's anybody fine. drive just in quite... Just a second, um, Sir Robert, that was fine, that was fine. Yes, um, There's just one small thing, um, if you could emphasise the road safety aspect of it slightly more than you were there in your own words, um, if you could emphasise the fact that tyres are more about safety than about danger, um, if you remember uh, your script, um, yes. I am convinced, I'm convinced that this is a major contribution to road safety. Uh, you are, let's try it just on your spot there. Okay, let's rehearse it and yes. rehearsal. Uh, I, I am convinced that this is... That's right. I'm convinced this is a major contribution to... To road safety. To, to road safety. I am convinced. You are. I am convinced this is a major contribution. I am convinced that this is This isn't Starsky and Hutch, you know. What is it's all right. It's all right. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah? Uh, I wonder if you could help me, please. Um, I want to buy a gramophone. A what? A gramophone. <laughs> gramophone. <laughs> a gramophone. <laughs> I don't think we've got any gramophones here, Grandad. <laughs> What's that? That's a trio automatic cut direct drive turntable, unless I'm very much mistaken. What's the difference between that and a gramophone? Well, about 30 years in a plastic cupboard, do you, Chief? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'd like one of these, please. You sure? Yes, please. All right. This is going to be good. Right, well, as you can see, it's, uh, it's got all the speeds. It's got 33 and 45. Yes, what, what do it... I do with my old 78s? <laughs> <laughs> what do you say? Nothing, nothing. Uh, you said, what about my old 78s, didn't you? <laughs> no, no, I didn't, honestly, no. <laughs> all right. So, you got your deck. Right. Do you want a Dolby with it? Uh, yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> you only had Dolby's with tape recorders, Chief, all right? <laughs> do you want an amp? Uh, no, I want that. <laughs> You aren't here anything, Grandad, without an amp, I'm afraid. Oh, so, of course, I, yes, I want an amp. You want yes, an amp. Yes, All right, what sort of output are you looking for? What sort have you got? Uh, <laughs> no, no clues. <laughs> About medium? How many watts, exactly? Well, oh, I should think about, um, about three. <laughs> no, two, two thousand. <laughs> Five hundred? Thirty? 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 Thirty. So you know all about it now, do you? 30. You want a thirty-watt amp? A thirty-watt amp. Do you want speakers? Yes. Do you want rumble filters? Yes. Do you want a bag on your head? Yes. <laughs> there we are, I'm bag on you. So you got your deck, you got your amp, you got your rumble filters, and of course, you got your bag on your head. Now, do you want woofers and tweeters? No, I don't want stupid things like woofers. Well, you got them when you want them or not, Grandad, they're in your speakers. <laughs> You'll be telling us you don't want slimline salad dressing. Yes, I do want slimline salad dressing. <laughs> <laughs>
give them two short ones. People bought my latest hits, cause they like my latex tits. Everyone trying hard to get inside my, my Leo. Snod. Wait till my hairdresser to have the hair too. Will you ask if I knew a la recherche de ton père et tu? That's how I was introduced to Colette Cocteau and Marcel Proust. Now her food cookery is just a sideline. Dislike her, despise her, hate the sight of the moth-eaten Snoopy doll she's had since college, and despise her brother, the chartered surveyor, who invites himself for dinner and drinks thy scotch after you've gone to bed. <laughs> Dost thou dislike her mother, hate her cooking, get irritated that she picks at her toenails in bed, and that the clippings somehow find their way into that little crack in the side of the duvet? And wilt thou forsake her for as long as ye both shall live? I will. Muriel, wilt thou leave this drunken shit who is thy widow? <laughs> Didst thou dislike the brevity and infrequency of his lovemaking? And wert thou so sick of having to lie to him about how it's not size that's important? <laughs> and, that, and that you'd have more fun in bed with one of those seaside collecting boxes made out of a mine? And will you, if given half a chance, cheerfully wring his neck? I will. Who taketh this woman away from this man? I do. Just say these words after me. I take thee from thy wedded husband. I take thee from my wedded husband. To have and to hold from this day forth. To have and to hold from this day forth. For I am Frank Hodgkiss. For I am Frank Hodgkiss. The lounge lizard from account. The lounge lizard from accounts. And thereto I plight thee my troth. And thereto I plight thee my troth. Dearly beloved, divorce is an honourable estate. <laughs> and is not to be taken in hand lightly, inadvisedly, or wantonly to satisfy men's carnal lusts. Although that's a pretty good reason. <laughs> it just proves how blind and stupid uh, uh, Dennis and his party are. Uh, you know, I wonder if you know anything about economics at all. Mr. Well, Mr. Robbins, your view. Well, now that Michael has allowed me to get a word in, I ha! have to say I've never heard such rubbish. And to think that this man is in the government is quite fright. I resent that snide remark. It's exactly the kind of thing I have come to expect from your kind of politician. My kind of politician. If only the public knew to what depth some people will stoop when they enter the this, house. This is the kind of, this is the kind of politician who will... <laughs> will be greatly missed. <laughs> a, great, a great parliamentarian of our time and a close personal friend. <laughs> I am heartful. Dr. David Bellamy, preparing for his new TV series about alcoholic beverages, was rushed to hospital last night after drinking 27 pints of his favourite lager. His condition is reported as being fair to piddling. Security men responsible for the safety of President-elect Ronald Reagan have come up with a new device to prevent him from being shot through the brain. 
bulletproof underpants. <laughs> there, you are. there you are, there you are. That is just the kind of bad language and, above all, endless references to parts of the body that are becoming, by their ceaseless repetition, knob in the media. Just part and parcel and, and pubes of everyday conversation. <laughs> and that is why I insist that we must relief, massage the bad language out of television rump. So what you're saying is that without our knowing it, our tickle my nuts language is becoming... <laughs> Inner thigh, yes. <laughs> Dr. Bison, if I may turn over, I like it better that way to you. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm sorry, I just can't see what proof the Reverend Bartholomew has for this strange breast fondling theory. Well, you just, well, you just have to listen. You just have to listen, Dr. Stifled Moan Bison. Did you realise that in the middle of that sentence, for instance, you said breast fondling large nipple? I did not! <laughs> yes! Yank on it, you did. That's my whole big thing point. People are swearing and uttering obscenities. Take me, take me without even knowing it. Oh, oh, oh huge melons. You are, I'm afraid, imagining this pantyhose, Reverend. This is hardly surprising coming as it does from a soft underbelly just above the private equipment minister of the church. I beg your pardon, Wang. Now let's be balls pizzle frank about this. Well, I'm, I'm sorry, gentlemen. That's all the lipstick around the nipple we have time for. A great huge wobbly dangly Oh, one. Christ. Just a moment. Half the cleanest. A clean. Oh. Can I help you? Yes, I rather think you can. There's one particular ornament in your shop I've taken rather a fancy to. Ah, uh, yes, sir. Which one is that, then? As you probably noticed, I've spent the last 15 minutes perusing what you have on display here. I've yeah. taken into consideration every single article of merchandise. I must say how impressed I am by the high standards of your wear. Oh, thank you very much, sir. <laughs> I've taken into consideration the magnificent porcelain shire horse with the genuine leather harness and the copper look barrel cart. The leaping dolphin water vessel with the detachable dorsal fin for the storage of cocktail sticks. And this charming balsa wood windmill with the musical barometer encrusted with seashells and bearing the timeless legend Frey Bonnie Scotland. And I've dismissed them all in favour of one exceptional piece. Oh, yes, sir. Which completely overawed me the moment I set eyes on it. And I have this, <laughs> and this burning desire, an uncontrollable urge, to purchase it and to place it in my possession. Yes, sir, and, and which item is that then, sir? It's the rampant mackerel ashtray. <laughs> <laughs> Diligently fashioned in blue onyx, sitting atop a glistening rock pool which contains one perfect matchbox. Uh, yes, sir. this is a piece, I think. Yes. How much is it? Uh, well, that's um, £19.95, sir. How can I ever, ever thank you enough? Well, oh, don't mention it. I'm sure. To think. At last, it is mine. God! God! I see it! Statistics, cheap, nasty, me, do a little nauseous, nauseous, awful. I can't, I know that I want to puke on it. There was one other piece. <laughs> I took rather. 